What's going on crew? Today we're gonna to do a high level summary of foundational model ops. And that is a fancy word to say, all of the really cool infrastructure that is getting built in the AI industry to help power these new apps and these new AI empowered apps that are uh, coming out now. Uh, it's gonna be an article review and Foundation Capital just came out with a really awesome summary about what this space looks like. I took a deep read of the article and a deep read is one that you don't skim. You actually go through it and you take proper notes on it. And as I was reading it, I thought to myself, man, this would be really cool to share with everybody because I think it does a really awesome job uh, doing, giving an overview of the landscape. This is not a sponsored post and I genuinely thought it was helpful. So I think you will too. And uh, let's jump right into it. Here's the article that we're chatting about today. Link for this article and for the slides are gonna be in the description. There's a lot of really cool information here and I encourage you to go check it out yourself. All right here, so foundational model ops. These slides, uh, link in the description if you want it. So the old way that we used to do things is if you wanted to do an awesome AI powered app, well, you needed to do a lot of in-house development and this would take you months or years to do. However, in the new uh, days, in 2023 here, you can do it in five minutes. And that is because in this green little section, there is a growing, prosperous AI infrastructure in industry that is making this really easy for all of us to do here, which is really cool. And this summary is going to talk about this growing industry here. And you may have some ideas about tools that you want to incorporate to make your life easier. Let's go over the different sections of how Foundation Capital is thinking about the space here. Now, the very first uh, space they're thinking about or section is going to be the adapt phase. And this is where you customize and extend the capabilities of foundational models. And what I mean by that is there's three different parts. There is gonna be the prompt engineering and management part. And this is where you actually do your, uh, your prompt engineering. We'll go over what that means in just a second. You have your te prompt templates, you have marketplaces for prompts, and you do your prompt management. The second section is gonna be around data and embedding management. So as you've seen in other videos, you can actually make embeddings of your documents, upload those to the cloud, and do similarity search really easily for in-context learning, which is really cool. And then lastly, in the DAP section, you're gonna have a fine tuning. So this is where you actually further train your generalized models on your specific use case, whether it be medical or law or whatever. The next section is gonna be the foundational model programming frameworks. So that's a big long word to say the orchestration layer for the different parts of the app workflow. This is gonna be things like Langchain or things that do document loading and parsing and go from there. And then finally, down at the bottom, we have deploy, optimize, and monitor. Now, this is the section, you can think of this as the home for your models and the home for your apps. And there's gonna be a lot of really cool version control and performance testing and uh, uh, different functionality there for you to, uh, to deploy your apps. What I wanna do is jump into each one of these individual sections and give you a little bit more information about what it is and who are some of the companies that are playing in the space right now so that you can go investigate if this would be a good tool for your stack. First one we're gonna look at is the adapt phase, prompt engineering. Now there's an art and a science to prompt engineering and this is the, uh, the, the way of giving instructions to your language model. Now here is an example, a not great example, of something I might input to a language model. Give me a classification whether or not people are happy or sad based off of what they said, output. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, it may or may not say this, but the point is that the instructions aren't very good. And there's quite an art to giving good instructions, just like there's an art to giving good instructions to humans as well. So a better example of this would be where you parse out your individual instructions, you may give a few examples, and you may uh, structure your input a little bit better. Uh, and hopefully you get better output. And this art of giving better instructions is called prompt engineering. If you wanna learn about how to do better prompt engineering, one thing that I would recommend, oops, one thing I would recommend is heading over to this video and link is in the slides, which the, that link's in the description. This is about an hour long video, but it really helped me level up my skills with prompt engineering. It's a great resource. Okay. The second big area is going to be around prompt management. Now, the reason why you, we even need prompt management in the first place is because prompt design is an iterative process. You try one prompt, you may try another. And when, whenever you have an iteration on top of a process, well, now you need to manage that iteration. And then you need tools to organize and track your iterations. And you may even want to A-B test your iterations. So there's a whole field within this space. Uh, some of the companies in here are going to be prompt layer and honey hive as well so you can go on there and see their demos for how they like to manage their prompts okay 
The next area we're going to look at is the prompt template and marketplace. So now that you have your prompt, you may say, this one's not working out as great as I want. I would really love if somebody would just give me a prompt or I could go find some and search some uh, elsewhere. And so there are templates for this where you can go to Promptable or Gradient J and you can go look at their prompts that they have, which have been proven out to be uh, bona fide, if you will. Or what you can do is you can go to some marketplaces like Prompt Base or Flow GPT. And on there you can uh, buy, sell, or exchange different prompts uh, if you want to, which it would be fabulous if that's uh, your use case. And then uh, we have data embedding and uh, data and embedding management. And in this case, uh, in previous tutorials, I've shown how you can actually take a book, split it up into different chunks or documents, and then get embeddings for those documents. And embeddings are going to be just a vectorization, which is a fancy word for a long string of numbers that represent the, the meaning of that particular passage. Now, because this is so popular, a lot of folks are starting to create infrastructure for this specifically. And that is where you actually create uh, databases for that. So we've talked about Pinecone in the past, and that is a really awesome database where you can store your vectors there. And then also Weaviate is an example that the community is using as well. Next up, we have Adapt with Fine Tuning. So this is where you're actually gonna be altering your generalized model to a more specific use case. So it's as if you're taking your chat GPT, just base model, and you're giving a lot of law documents, a lot of contracts, or a lot of medical documents, and you want it to be really good at answering those types of questions. You can do that with fine tuning there. And uh, the people who are helping us with this right now, or the businesses, is going to be Human Loop and Vellum.ai. And so you may want to go check these out if that's your case as well, or you have, if you have a very specific use case you want to run through. Next, we're going to move on to the foundational model programming frameworks. So these, this is the orchestration layer that we were talking about beforehand that really helps with a lot of these different tools and connecting different pieces together. So with these, they help out with prompt templates, they load other integrations, they do document loading, they do embedding models, third-party APIs, agents, which is really cool, and they just do overall a whole bunch of coordinating with other apps. And if you want to understand this even further, I have an entire series on Langchain um, that you can step through if you want to understand its functionality. So who are the players in this space? Well, you have Langchain, which is uh, one of the biggest ones and the one that I'm most familiar with. And then you also have Dust and you have Clue. Now. If anybody from Clue is watching this, uh, I tried finding your website and I typed in Clue AI and nothing popped up. I tried typing in Clue, Clue Framework and nothing popped up here. Uh, you need to do a better job at SEO, okay? I say, I say that with love. Awesome, so that's on the, uh, uh, that's on the orchestration layer here. Now let's move on finally to the deploy, monetize, and monitor section. So in this one, this is gonna be basically your hub for your models. And so you're gonna do a lot of testing, a lot of iterations, and you're gonna be managing human feedback, and you're gonna be retraining models as well. And so think of this as uh, the whole, the big parent looking down on all your different processes and helping you uh, manage everything there. The players who are in this space are going to be HoneyHive and Vellum.ai as well, some of the people we've seen in uh, other sections here. Now, the last thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to look at all these different sections and I wanted to evaluate them from an investor's eye or from a builder's eye. So say you're an entrepreneur and you're like, man, I want to jump into this space, but where do I want to jump in? Well, here are my pros and cons and different thoughts on each one of these different sections. So with the prompt engineering and management side, um, it's needed for sure. It's way better than hard-coded prompts, but I'm unclear how durable this area is. Um, I'm unsure how long prompts is going to be a thing. Uh, I, I bet it will for, be for a while, but it seems like prompts is more of a stopgap before there's other ways to communicate with these language models. For data embedding and management, this is mission critical, which is really cool. Um, the difficult part with this is there's a lot of players in the space and it's hard to differentiate right now. So it takes a lot of work to differentiate yourself. And then in the fine tuning space, um, the pros are it's expensive, meaning you can charge a lot for your customers with this. It's likely an enterprise play. And uh, it's difficult for the end user to manage uh, many different models. And so that's why they would want your use case to come in. Um, the cons of this is I'm gonna avoid fine tuning as long as I possibly can. Uh, my use cases won't be uh, the first ones I think that you guys will go for. It'd be more of an enterprise play. And the reason for this is because it's a lot less complicated and cheaper to do in context learning and even try something with those with the vector stores that we were talking about beforehand um, to do as a first pass before you go full blown fine tuning.
So for foundational model frameworks, in this case, uh, like Langchain, it's mission critical, it touches full stack, and other players wanna integrate into there. So if you have a tool, you're gonna wanna integrate into Langchain. And it's a central hub for AI app logic, which is really cool. Now, the cons, and these are cons not of being in this space, but the cons of if you were gonna evaluate the space to go into, um, this is kind of an area where the players who have momentum will keep on gaining momentum. So there's um, people have already been building the space for a few months here. So you're uh, you may just be a few months behind, which isn't a bad thing. There's always going to be new people popping up. It's just going to take a lot of work to catch up there, um, specifically to Langchain because the community is huge and people are integrating all over the place. And every day that passes is just another uh, is more moat that comes in here. Um, apologies if I'm biased for Langchain. Now, uh, the very last section, the deploy, optimize, and monitor one. So this is also mission critical. It also touches full stack. Other players want to integrate into your stack as well. And it's the AI, uh, it's the hub for your AI app deployments, which is really, really cool, uh, and performance. And so the more software you build here, the more moat you're going to have. Now, uh, again, this one is one of those spaces where because it's so mission critical, because the customers are going to be so ingrained on your app that players are going to have momentum and people are just going to start rolling with these. And so it's going to be difficult to enter if you want to. Now, if I were going to pick one of those that I like the most for investing and for business, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my green check mark to the deploy, optimize and monitor stage. Um, I think there's just a lot of really awesome things here and your app could be the central hub for where you're looking at your, um, your app's performance, meaning if you built a tool in this one. So that's my evaluation on the space and that's where I would go if I was building. All right, that's an overview of the article and an overview of the space. If you want more information, I highly suggest that you head over to foundationcapital.com and check out the link uh, for this uh, specific article itself. Cool.